So my name is Fulvia Verde. I work, I'm currently an associate professor at the University of Miami School of Medicine. Uh, I've been there for 16 years, uh, but before I, I worked in London with uh, uh, Dr. Paul Nurse, who uh, was involved in the analysis of the cell cycle control. And before I studied, I did my PhD in Germany, at Heidelberg. For my, oh, my undergraduate, I was uh, looking, this was many years ago, the role of methylation, DNA methylation in the development in plant cells. Uh, but then when I went to do my PhD, I started working on uh, a project related to the cell cycle, which was at the time a really emerging field. And uh, in particular, I was working on microtubule dynamics during the transition from interphase to mitosis uh, in Xenopus extras, and I worked there with a wonderful mentor, Eric Carsenti, in uh, at the MBL in Heidelberg. And it was a really a fantastic time because it was the moment where the first understanding of the cell cycle came about. It was a um, as a slow process, um, but I was very fortunate because uh, I always liked biology, I always liked medicine, and uh, I decided to try to enter into a university in a college in Pisa which is actually geared towards research. And so I was admitted there. And when I was admitted there, actually, I was the only I think I was the only woman in the science class <laughs> at the time. <laughs> it's, a, it's a small, very selective college then. And, uh, and then slowly I realized that uh, to be in the company of other people who really wanted to do research was really a privilege. And it was really a, a, you know, a wonderful way to spend your, you know, your life. And, yes, so. And then I had the opportunity to move to Heidelberg, doing something that, again, I was very interested in. So I don't think there was a lot of turning back then. I, uh, my grandmother was a mathematician. And she uh, studied mathematics at the time in the 19, early 20s in Italy. And she was, again, the only woman studying mathematics. So that somehow had been, had, it, it was an atmosphere that was weaved in the family. Yeah. Growing up, yeah, I would say my grandmother was really a strong influence. Um, some of very intellectual teachers I met, they were not the same, but mostly my, in the family was my grandmother, because that has shown me that you can, Really, you don't. You can compromise, but you don't need to really completely compromise. You can get. You can go where you want to go, and still have a family, and still have a successful family. And so that was a very good influence on me. I came to Woodsall three years ago, and uh, I, of course, I knew about Woodsall. I knew about experiments, especially the experiment done in the cell cycle field here. Uh, by John Rudermans and Tim, Tim Hunt, and uh, it was very famous. But I didn't know maybe about the atmosphere in the summer, what it is MBL in the summer, that it's really a community that forms, of, and it's really a very creative community, and it's really um, a community of people who share the same passion. And so the intensity of the place, the fact that you can do experiments and you can talk to all your friends, which are also your colleagues, about you know, details of biology that you're, you're feeling very strongly about, I think it's really it's in a beautiful environment. And you can also bring your family and your family can get involved in all this. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's really a special. I've never seen something like this happening anywhere. So I work on the mechanism which underline uh, cell form. So I work on uh, uh, how does the cell uh, organize its own uh, uh, internal machinery so it can grow in a polarized fashion, how uh, signal transduction pathway regulate the cytoskeleton so it can polymerize in a certain direction, 
and um, how all this works at the cell-wide level. And it, it, so it involves a lot of cellular dynamics, a lot of visualization of internal structure. So it's also aesthetically very beautiful, very pleasing to look at. There is an intrinsic beauty in actually what we are looking at. But it's also extremely interesting. And uh, we, I combine, uh, in collaborate, I collaborate with physicists as well, as well. And so we combine some of our microscopic analysis with genetic analysis and also with some mathematical modeling. And uh, we come up with the paradigms of how this all works. Sci science to a certain level, it's, it's sort of a bit addictive. So when you actually um, look at nature and you actually have the ab ability to understand the riddle behind it, it's really a, a, a fascination. And also you admire the beauty of, of it all. And so I think it, that, that, that has been the primary motivation. The primary motivation is actually the, the state of, of mind that you are when you're observing all these things and the ability to share it with others, you know, that share the same passion. And hopefully the idea of doing something useful, hopefully the idea that in collaboration with all the other scientists, we are, you know, we're bringing something to everybody else that they can appreciate too and that can be useful to them. I think it is very special because I think the fact that it offers uh, something for everybody and it also it supports uh, the education of the, of the children of the scientists means that actually I see a lot of, I see women who come here actually and, and bring everybody and they try to, um, they participate in courses. So I think it's a very positive environment. What I can see from my summer experiences, it's very positive. Uh, I think the fact that we can come here and work and our kids are doing well too, it's wonderful. Yeah, so, so, it's, so I think it's very special. I really think it's uh, unique I, uh, as an institution, as a summer institution especially.